May I now invite the co-founder, Auguste Invention Private Limited, Mr. Pranthik Sinha, to kindly join us onto the stage. We are also being joined by Engineering Head Biogas Engineering India Private Limited, Mr. Nek Singh Thakur. I also invite Business Field Manager, Environment and Energy, Nijay Pumps and System India, Mr. Vikas Kumar. And we are also very privileged to have amongst us the Director of Sales, Armatech, Mr. Florian Uwek, onto the stage, please. Organizing team, we need quickly an attention here to bring in our chair on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin with our session and I would request our moderator of the session to kindly introduce our esteemed panelist on the stage and also take care of the session from now onwards. Over to you, moderator of the session. Hello. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, so I think uh, we'll start the final session of the day. And it was really good to hear or present, to be present in most of the sessions. And yes, when we are talking about the greener technology or eco-friendly technology to treat biogas, uh, to treat the waste, it is the biogas technology. And as I always uh, repeat the statement in every session or wherever I speak, it is like India is strengthening the link between the agriculture as well as the industry. So this is more important uh, to create a resilient and a cleaner and green environment at the same time to promote the farming sector. And uh, India is going on the right track and uh, when we talk about uh, CBG or CNG, yes, India is the second largest consumer of uh, gas across the globe. And apart from this, there are you know, various plans when we were discussing with the Gale authorities uh, last year, it was said that in you know, almost 42% is 15% uh, is what the gas consumption uh, would be increased from 6% by 2030. So this figure itself is a huge, huge figure, and uh, already they have uh, achieved more than 8, 8.5%. And yes, I'm sure that by 2030, the estimations would definitely be achieved. And I would like to introduce our uh, team. So, Mr. Uh, you have the mic. So I would allow uh, the speakers to introduce themselves if Mr. Palash Talapur. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm the business development director for Atmos Power Private Limited. We're the market specialist in gas separation, dehydration, uh, upgradation systems. We work with biogas, landfill gas, producer gas, uh, syn gas, <laughs> whatever types of gases that need to be purified. We also work with refineries for natural gas upgradation. And we have about 100 installations across Asia. We, are, we have a joint venture in Switzerland for supplying our systems across Europe. And we also own and operate our own biogas plants. And uh, we look forward to owning and operating many more such plants. So, pleasure being here. Thank you, Vlash. Nek Singh. Good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Nek Singh Thakur. I'm engineering head in biogas en uh, engineering company. Um, we, we are in purification section mainly, so biogas purification, landfill gas purification, and uh, we are a USA-based company, and uh, all our pro projects basically are in USA. So uh, we, we mostly deal, uh, you can say, in, uh, in engineering, procurement, construction, and uh, here we are also trying to explore the market and uh, enter here. And uh, we recently started in India, and we are very hopeful for the future in here. Yes, Prantik. Yeah. Hi, uh, myself, Prantik Sena. I am the co-founder of Agastya Invention. So we are the manufacturers of flexible biogas storage solutions. And uh, we manufacture the biogas balloons or the flexible storage solutions from domestic to the industrial level. And uh, we are one-stop solution for a flexible storage solutions for all gas and liquid, yeah. Florian. Hello, my name is Florian Wick. I'm from uh, the company uh, Armatech FTS uh, GmbH. And 
we are producer for uh, mixers and pumps for the biogas industry. We uh, produce now since 1965 uh, uh, the products uh, uh, for the biogas and for our agriculture market. And we uh, sell our products around the world. We uh, have now since uh, uh, one year uh, uh, subsidiary in Hyderabad with, mid, uh, with our general manager, Mr. Vijay Lanka Kumar. We have their storage for our mixers and pumps, uh, and we search for uh, uh, more uh, customers in, uh, around India because India is a really huge market for us and a really good market for biogas. Vikas? Hello, uh, my name is Vikas Kumar. I work for uh, Netch Pumps and System. It's a German, 150-year-old German company. And we are doing biogas plant, you know, for a long time. More than 1,000 installations in uh, Germany. And in India, we have more than 50-plus installations. And we are our focus. We have a factory in uh, Goa. In India, we have a factory. So company focuses in the region, for the region. And that, on that concept, Netch works. So, uh, and we are uh, having the innovative solution, which we will discuss later. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas. And uh, yes, I love the statement of James Cameron, Cameron that the nation that leads in the renewable energy will be the nation that leads the world. And coming back to our uh, biogas sector, earlier it was when we talk about biogas, the consumption patterns was completely different. They used to generate electricity and run CHPs and consume in-house or give electricity or off-grid, on-grid. But recently the usage of the electricity, the generated biogas, upgraded biogas has changed the entire market perspective and people are now converting into CNG and using it for various uh, applications, right, from industrial fuel replacement solutions or whether you say replacing uh, vehicular fuel. So I would like... Uh, Palash Tarapur to add something about when you talk about uh, your company, uh, Atmos Power. So, what does that differentiate from other companies? Because there are many uh, PSA players or many companies who are supplying PSA equipments. So, would you? No, no, no. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to say that when we install our plants, we don't we don't have a client and supplier relationship. We have a partner to partner relationship where we ensure that the plant that we supply is operating continuously rather than just a one time sale. So we have a lot of clients where we're working with for the past eight years, such as Amul Dairy, where we install a plant in about 2014 or 15. It's still running. We're doing the operation and maintenance for them. And it's a very synergistic relationship where based on that, we've got much, many more orders from Amul Dairy with their parent branches. And I think when we developed this PSA technology, uh, we had the Indian mines, uh, market in mind. And so we thought about having a technology that is a very low pressure requirement. So it operates at 0.7 bar compared to a typical PSA that operates at 7 to 10 bar or a membrane that operates at 12 to 16 bar. So the power requirement reduces significantly. At the same time, there is much less wear and tear as part of our systems. So. It's a very exciting market now, and our hard work for the past 15 years is paying off now that the biogas market is becoming a very ripe market. Okay, thank you. And next thing, when see, you are also in the purification sector, I would like to understand about what is the vision you are looking at a biogas purification facility in India? See, uh, we, we are in, uh, purely in this uh, purification and uh, we have been designing these plants from past six, seven years outside India. So if we talk about the reason the plant, what we see outside, they are like highly automated and they're continuously monitoring is there, they're highly yield and uh, you know, uh, the purity is always maintained. So it's a very robust system over there, but definitely it comes with the cost. So when we started in India and we saw there is a great opportunity here and the people now they are coming forward for all kind of you know uh, open with open mindset okay they are ready to invest but at the same time there is little bit uh, you can say limitation because the economics doesn't favor here so what our vision is here that we bring that kind of technology here where the client is you know they they are uh, they have the peace of mind 
that okay, these facilities there which are operating continuously and performing great, but at the same time at optimum cost. So that is the one thing which we, we are working on. And the, the good thing is, which is happening now and uh, in past few days which I have observed and in past year I think I would say uh, that, that we have seen more and more people are coming forward for, to put these new plants. So what is happening when new people are coming then uh, there is this competition and now we are seeing that like compressor manufacturer they are planning to set up their uh, facility in India. So that will ultimately help customer here. So the future looks pretty bright, and uh, I, I can say that with the time, the uh, technology, it will improve, the uh, supplier, supply chain issue, that will improve, and we, we can have a customer who will be very satisfied. So that's what I see in coming years. Yes, I do agree, and uh, uh, the technologies are right at the place, but I, as an expert, I regularly receive so many calls from uh, various uh, entrepreneurs as well as the people who have already installed or people who are uh, looking for installations that why there is a huge difference between the cost as well as the techno technical parameters when we talk about the same project or the same sizing. So maybe I will uh, put some light on the cost part after the second round of the questions. Mr. Vikas, I would like to understand that what is the difference between your pumps, Netch pumps and the other companies which make, you know, people to select your pump for biogas industry? Yeah. So uh, our pumps, definitely you being a German company, we are uh, always focused on the technology and technology which translates into lower cost of capital. That is the whole agenda on which we work. So the first thing as a, anybody who gets is the energy saving. So at least if you are uh, using net pumps, you can always be assured that 25 to 30% power saving is always there. The second concept which company has is in the region for the regions. So product which you are getting, so we have a plant, that is the reason we have a plant in India. So we have a plant in India, so you get a product, faster delivery, quicker service because that also becomes very, very important especially when you are running the plant continuously. So that is the second thing. Then during the selections, we do lots of value addition. And how we do it, there are lots of calculation, lots of know-how, which we have learned over a period of time from the various, you know, uh, doing our work in Germany and then um, uh, doing in India. We have done uh, so much of experience with many of the different, different feeds at the many of the pilot plants. So we are utilizing those experiences and we share with our clients so that when they are going to put the plants, they should benefit. Because at the end of the day, what we believe that whatever we have learned, it should be a spread, and that is what, you know, motto on which Netch works. Yes. And uh, Prantik, I just wanted to understand that uh, people always talk about uh, storing biogas in flexible storage uh, membranes. So what are the different types of membranes? Because I'm sure that there are various types which even people in the industry are confused. And most of the entrepreneurs who have already installed plants, they feel that there is only single membranes or the double membranes, the fabric quality I'm talking about. That there is only one product available in the market. So is it only one product or how many different types of storage uh, membranes are there? Yeah, so when you uh, say about the storage membranes, what I say is we have to understand that first thing we ask our clients when they talk about bigger plants where double membranes are generally used, that what is the wind load, where it is situated, like uh, is it close to the sea or uh, it's in the middle of the country where the wind is not so much there. I would suggest that suppose, uh, I'll just give you an example what we have done. Uh, there is a digester of suppose 35 meter dia. There we have installed 1050 GSM fabric and a dia of uh, 40 meter we have installed, I'm just giving an example, 900 GSM. It's not about the GSM, actually in India generally people are uh, concerned about the GSM. Is that the thicker the fabric, the higher the strength. The thing is the tensile strength of the fabric determines the quality of the fabric. The, uh, if a manufacturer gives a fabric within, uh, a, a gives a fabric of higher tensile strength in lower G G GSM, the fabric is also good, but the higher GSM with higher strength is also good. So don't uh, consider a double membrane based on GSM. I would suggest that. The, uh, when we suggest that how the balloon would be done, we we actually do lots of static calculations, dynamic 
calculations and then we arrive at a conclusion that what would be the height of the balloon, uh, the aerodynamic uh, uh, effect that affects on the balloon, the rain, the wind or somewhere in the Europe, you can also have to take into account about the snow load. So uh, there are many such cases of double membrane that we need to consider. Yes, the, obviously the edge by D ratio when you're calculating the balloon uh, height or uh, width or dia plays a crucial role, but I have seen that you know most of the entrepreneurs are neglecting this fact, but I don't know of what is the reason, but yes. And uh, Florian, would you like to put some light about what is the difference between the slow moving agitators and the fast moving agitators? Yes, um, I, I think the uh, slow moving mixers are uh, the important mixer now on the biogas market. Uh, in Europe, uh, um, we start with fast moving mixer uh, with uh, over 200 and uh, up to 400 RPMs. Um, they are really fast, uh, they have a good thrust inside the di uh, digester, but the big problem is now the substrate will, uh, 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 will uh, be um, more crazy than uh, in the past. Uh, really strong material, really thick material, and the dry matter content go up to 14, 15 percent uh, inside the digester, and uh, you can't mix this substrate with uh, a fast-moving mixer. It's like I say to my customer every time: it's like uh, when you will mix honey with a, uh, with a small spoon, uh, then you have a small hole inside. But when you uh, use a big spoon, then you mix it slow, then you mix the complete honey. And yes, uh, the uh, the importance from a slow-moving mixer is. The power consumption. We uh, we uh, produce our Evo Plus mixer with a 7.5 kilowatt motor with a 1.4 uh, uh, dia propeller, polyamide 3D propeller, and we have a really good uh, circulation rate inside the digester for uh, uh, a 32 dia uh, 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 digester with a dry matter content from 12% and 8 meter height. We use normally four mixers, then we have only 30 kilowatt inside the digester. Uh, with a fast moving mixer, uh, you, you need four mixer with uh, 15 kilowatt, then you have 60 kilowatt inside. And the power consumption from uh, one of this mixer have only eight to nine ampere, and a fast moving mixer have a, a power consumption up to 30 kilowatt, or, uh, 30 ampere. This is the, uh, the important uh, thing about uh, between a slow mi a moving mixer and a fast moving mixer. And uh, yeah, for, for the, for the uh, uh, substrate inside, for the biologic, so slow moving, it's much more better as when uh, the biologic get too much push inside the digester, the substrate is too fast, then you get problems with the biologic. Okay, so in short, you want to say that uh, the fast moving, uh, the slow moving agitators are much more electrical efficiency wise and it will consume almost 50% of the electricity. Yes, this is right. Okay. And uh, coming back to the upgradation part, it's a common uh, call which I receive regularly that, you know, uh, if we are going for ahead with a PSA or membrane, the, the losses are almost 15 to 20 percent. Okay, so I would like to ask Palash that what is the difference between your uh, the uh, PSA manufactured by Atmos and uh, the PSA manufactured by other companies? So it is whether it is uh, 15, 20 percent, 7 percent or how it would be actually. Uh, thanks for the question. So, so n as I said, we've approaching about 100 installations so far. In the first 10 installations, even we had a methane loss of 30%. So we know that is the standard methane loss of a PSA system, just based on the principle of pressure swing adsorption. You will have methane losses. However, at that time, there was no market awareness. We were new in the market, but then we started realizing that this 30% is 30% loss of revenue. So we had to do something about it. And that's when we started thinking of a recovery system which is basically a two-state system. In a membrane, you have a three-state system. So in the PSA, we have a two-state system where we recover the 30% losses and it gets sent back to our system rather than being exhausted into the atmosphere. And that's why we have our patent since the past five years. And that's why we don't now offer a second-state system. It is a mandatory part of our package because even if the client does not understand why the importance of methane recovery is there, we still instill it because right now in the market, if you go and buy a PSA without a second stage or recovery system, you'll have a typical loss of 20%, which a lot of clients aren't aware of. 
So it's, it's important and mandatory for people to know the commercial aspect of methane losses at the same time the environmental impact of methane being released. And that's why all our systems will always have 99% recovery. Okay. And uh, Mr. Naik, I would like to understand that, you know, uh, when you talk about Indian market, what are the misconceptions you find in the Indian uh, biogas uh, purification area? See, uh, it's been a long time since we are interacting with people and uh, the there are many misconceptions, not one I would say. So we particularly deal with membrane systems, so uh, I'll talk about that. The very first misconception is that, that this technology is very sensitive to variation in operating parameter. When I say variation in operating parameter, it's like uh, flow and composition. So I'll give you just one example, and that will tell you how robust this technology is. Like in California, we have a central dairy upgrading system, which is designed for 5,000 normal meter cube per hour. So it's a huge uh, facility, and uh, it caters the biogas from 19 different dairies, which is like in California, it's cluster system. So from all dairies, the gas is sent to the central upgrading. So these dairies are commissioned in phase-wise, and at the time, we had only 500 normal meter cube flow. So at that time also, we could achieve the desired purity and yield. So basically, this is not a concern at all for the, for the membrane technology. Flow variation, composition variation, today you give me 50% uh, methane, and let's say during the summer it goes higher, about 65. It can be addressed. So same goes with the flow. If you have designed a facility for 1,000 normal meter cube per hour, but uh, during winter season you might have only 600 normal meter cube per hour. So that variation is there. It can be addressed. But the thing that we need from client to give those variation during the design stage so that we can design it, so normally clients are not aware what the inquiry what we receive, they're not mostly what happened, they say, we need a plant for this five ton capacity and size it. We, we are trying to educate client that it is impossible to get fixed flow, it is impossible to get fixed composition. So you always give a design parameter where you see what will be the minimum and maximum and accordingly it can be designed. And, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the maximum, you know, misconception which we, we have heard. And when the plant are not automated and not designed to those variation, then you see sometimes high losses. But membrane are robust. And for two-stage system, 97% easily, continuously, for years to come, you will get that yield without any issue. And uh, they are, like, long-lasting and there are membranes which are operating for more than seven, eight years and still are in uh, service. So, so basically it's the engineering. Membrane is in itself is pretty good product. It doesn't need any engineering. The, all engineering is required, what you are feeding to the membrane before that. So that's where the experience come in picture and, you know, uh, and, and system can be designed accordingly. Yes, uh, you answered the one more question that, you know, technology is not a problem, but the technology suppliers who are supplying the technology are creating problems and issues to the projects. So coming back to uh, the storage solutions of biogas, uh, Mr. Prantik, I just wanted to understand that why the gas is being stored in the, you know, membranes or uh, the storage, flexible membranes. Why not in any other storage systems? So uh, when I uh, entered into the market about the storage, I, I learned a lot about steel, concrete, and uh, you know balloons. So what I felt is that balloon or the flexible membranes are lightweight. These are easily repairable. And uh, because of this double membrane, they, uh, the inner membrane does the breathing, and the outer membrane actually uh, controls the air pressure and also ex um, uh, controls the air pressure and exerts a normal pressure so that the biogas goes out. The outer membrane actually acts as a covering of the inner membrane such, such, such that it, it, is, um, it avoids the uh, weather conditions and uh, it remains safe. And also that it is uh, after 10 to 15 years when the, uh, I would suggest that uh, the life of the membrane is 10 to 15 years uh, apart from those uh, UV rays, H2S concentration, 
methane and all those things. The average life we have seen around 10 to 12 years. Now, the easy dismantlement of this balloon is also uh, to be considered because whenever you need to have something uh, to recheck, we have a hole or a glass uh, bullseye, we say, you can also check what is going on inside. So, th there are various, uh, you know, advantages of storing uh, biogas in the balloon or a membrane. Okay. So, I'm sure that cost would be definitely one factor which uh, plays a crucial role while installing a large-scale project. But small-scale, uh, yes, definitely can be thought about different uh, membranes or different uh, metals for storing the biogas. And uh, Mr. Vikas, I just wanted to understand that Next is present globally. So, what are the products which differentiates, uh, or you can say that what are the products available in India and globally, or what is the difference between those products related to biogas? Okay. So, NETCH uh, has a policy that whatever product we are making in Germany, exactly uh, like we have a four plants in Germany, India, China, and Brazil, all four plants will make the exactly identical product. So, there is no, in terms of product differentiation, there is nothing. Whatever you get in Germany, you get in India. Now, the solution which we have, and we have a very innovative solutions, like first pump, which is a bread and butter for us, is the progressive cavity pumps. People call it single screw pumps. So that is the, and it is a very important pumps, which is the core of the whole biogas process. It is feeding to the digester. Uh, if you, do, you are not feeding the digesters, how you will get the gas? So uh, this pumps, again, in this pumps also, we have innovations. Like we have seen uh, over a period of time that the slurry, and slurry gets stuck on the coupling rod. There is like three chamber you can see from the pump side. One is the pumping chamber, uh, housing, and then you have a drive. So in the housing and where the coupling rod is there, especially feed like agro waste, uh, feed like cow dung, they get, you know, try to a spiral over the coupling rod. So for that, we have a solution called FSIP, full service in place, where you have this very big inspection port. You just take it out, and you are able to take it out, those slurry, which helps the pumps to run, uh, to be in operation very faster because one philosophy in this pumps, anything is inside the pumping chamber, this pump can pump it out. Then we have an innovative solution which we do a lot in Germany, but we, have, we are not doing much in India because of the cost or because of the customer awareness, whatever you say. We call it mixing pump. So in the pumps, from one side you can put the substrate and on the other side you have the uh, port for the liquid. So, and that can mix, you know, and then we can pump it together. So, that is also one of the innovative solution, widely very, very popular in Germany, not in India. And one thing where one grinder, and many a times when we are approaching the biogas market, we need to, especially pumping, you need to think from the feed point of view. You are feeding fresh mud, you are feeding cow dung, you are feeding um, agro waste, paddy straw, you are feeding napier grass, everything is different. People try to make it one solution. Whatever I'm feeding, whatever I'm doing in fresh mud, it is working, going to work in paddy straw. That's not the case. That's the so one solution which I always recommend to you know all my, my clients is you should go for the grinder before the pump. That is, you are going to save the life of the pumps drastically. People are ignoring. Uh, at least till now, people we are ignoring quite a lot. But now we have seen because now our pumps are plants are operational. People are seeing the benefit and now new plant which we see, it is coming with the grinders and that is a very, very important product which you must consider when you are thinking about the pumping, grinder before the pump. That is very, very important, I would say, from the pumping point of view. Okay, and uh, I can say that uh, your answer will have a question for uh, Florian that, Florian, when uh, Netsch or any other company, they have recirculation pumps or... Uh, you can say, uh, you know, slurry recirculation or feeding pumps, and there are gas mixing or net mixing pumps as well as air, uh, the slurry mixing pumps. So why do we need agitators when the mixing solutions are already in place? Yes, um, in the digester, uh, you need any anything to to uh, uh, to uh, to get the gas yield uh, outside from the tank. That uh, that you get the gas and. Uh, you uh, will uh, you will uh, will not have any uh, swimming layers inside the tank. Because of this, you need anything to mix or to homogenize the substrate inside the digester. Um, because of this, normally in Germany we have uh, now uh, since uh, since 1999 uh, more than 
9,000 biogas plants built, and I think 99% are uh, installed uh, uh, mixers systems or agitator systems, and it work, uh, will work really fine and uh, really energy efficient. And yes, I, I heard uh, now uh, many times on, on this exhibition why you must use a mixer in my di uh, digester. Yes, you must homogenize the substrate. You will pre uh, uh, prevent any uh, swimming layers or sinking layers, and uh, you uh, will uh, put the gas outside from the substrate that you get your gas. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, but again, I'm sure that viscosity plays a very crucial role, which most of the entrepreneurs are neglecting and only looking at the cost of the equipments rather than the technical uh, side of the product. And uh, Mr. Naik, I just wanted to understand that, you know, when you're talking about membrane third stage or second stage, what is the uh, time period or the setup period you're looking for installation of the uh, equipment? So... Uh, I'll give you a little bit background about the equipment that we are used and why the timeline is, the, is a little high. Uh, this membrane system, it works on, uh, you know, it works on high pressure and uh, there's very selective equipment which is called an oil screw, flooded screw compressor that we use to compress the gas to make ensure there is no pulsation. So this is something which is not readily available in India. So most of the component, and I would say right now, uh, machines are being imported. So delivery time is something which is right now, uh, you know, that's, that's the reason why this plant takes about uh, 10 to uh, 8 to 10 months. And uh, most of the thing goes into the delivery. And uh, that's about uh, six to seven months for the compressor, and then the engineering only about 10% of the time. But uh, we, I'll tell you a little bit. We come from, uh, I'm personally come from the oil and ga uh, gas background. So we, the way things are being done in India, we are doing it differently. We are doing the complete 30% engineering upfront, where we are doing the uh, 3D modeling and the specifications, all those things. So to ensure we capture all the uh, construction or operational issue up, up front. So that experience we are trying to bring in biogas engineering and uh, that's, that's what uh, is take, add, adding a little bit time. So on, on average, this all adds up to 8 to 10 uh, months just because of the delivery and right now these uh, VFDs, all those things are so crucial and the market is, I'm not sure why, but market is so crucial about these electronic uh, items and delivery has been uh, impacted. But in near future, we see that this timeline can be reduced significantly. Vendors are coming in India and they are starting manufacturing in India. So they are promising once that starts happening. And I think this uh, delivery time could be shortened significantly. Okay. And... Uh I would and like to ask... There's, there's one uh, important factor, what we have learned in industry, sorry to interrupt you, is that uh, there's not significant importance given to purification. So the understanding in market is that, okay, purification part could be done, you know, uh, in a few months, and people are thinking about putting membrane, so they have already started working on digester, and digesters are almost ready, but when they are talking to us and they say, oh, we have not considered that factor. So that's a little surprising that people think that it can be done in very little time. So that's why it is important for people to know also that it, it takes time. Yes, and uh, this has to be incorporated in the project cost or people right now are in themselves are confused between the plant cost and project cost because most of the project uh, consultants or the companies, EPC companies are confusing the entrepreneurs between the cost of the project because I have seen the cost of 5 TPT, just to give an example, 5 TPT CNG plant, the cost is ranging from 15 to 75 crores. So this is where even the bankers are, the investors are confused, saying that the same feedstock, same size, same gas generation, but why there is a huge difference between the cost. So I always put uh, like to add that you know when you're going ahead for to installing any plant, yes, the BOQ has to be freezed, the bill of material needs to be freezed, then the project cost can be derived because most of the cases I have seen the cost where almost 50% of the costs are excluded, which is under the client scope, and this is a very uh, shocking uh, news for the 
uh, entrepreneur because already applying, op he must have applied for the loans, he has taken the loans and that's where the projects are delayed after installation of the digester and it, this goes on never ending story because he gets into the trap of uh, debt, finance, debt and you know, he has to start paying their EMI, EMIs. And uh, yes, I would like to ask uh, Palaj that when you are talking about uh, the PSA systems of Atmos or PSA systems of any different vendor, what are the checklist which any entrepreneur over here or you know person who needs to look at it so that it can differentiate between uh, both the companies? What does it make or stand out Atmos product compared to the other uh, competitors? Uh, so I think the first thing that if I was in the customer's shoes, what I would say is first show me a few of your running plans. You mentioned certain plans that you've done, please let us visit those plans, let us speak to the clients who you supply the plans to and most importantly, how many repeated customers do you have? Because only when you have a repeated customer that means your product is working, the client is satisfied and your service is good. So if I was a customer, I would make sure the PSA supplier has a operational reference list, a long operational reference list, more than five years at least, so you know the performance of the entire life cycle of the plant, and if the PSA supplier has repeated clients. Okay. And I'm sure that you know, the confusion of uh, the PSA market, which people still do not, not able to understand, is the amount of membranes or the molecular sieves to be filled in, which most of the people or the companies are misguiding or misleading the entrepreneurs. So this also I strongly feel that, you know, we need to standardize this so that, you know, the uh, companies cannot take uh, or cheat the vendors or the entrepreneurs. Yeah, yes. And uh, I would like to ask the same question to Prantik that what are the checklist or uh, precautions one need to take when before understanding or going ahead with the double membrane roof? So uh, before going into double membrane, one must understand that uh, what is the volume that they want to capture from there then the calculation starts i would suggest that before uh, going deciding on what membrane he should have a clear idea about the weather conditions about the load that will that will be exerted from the inner and outer side third the membrane should be completely rf welded and it has to be a hundred percent the seams have to be hundred percent checked before installing because after installation through cranes and all those things, then dismantle, it's, it's again a huge process. And also, uh, the, uh, you're installing it with a the concrete. The, there is a rubber gasket, there are steel plates, there are silica uh, gel for, you know, sealant. All things need to be done and pre-checked uh, pre after every installation. And also, uh, have to be seen that uh, from inside that whether the gas is, uh, the uh, inner membrane is breathing or not, uh, like going up or down, it has to be regularly checked because anything can happen from inside. So those are the checklists I would suggest for the uh, double membrane. Yes, but uh, simple question uh, which as most of the entrepreneurs ask me is what is the welding size or welding quality? Why there is a difference between different vendors? Some say 40 mm, some say 50 and there is a huge difference between the welding. Yeah, true. So, uh, as I said, uh, the welding seam strength, uh, uh, seam strength comes from the calculations and uh, in uh, somebody has said, as they said that they all goes by thumbnail. I won't suggest that, always say that do D by 4 d by 4 as the height uh, for 40 mm till 20 meter dia 40 mm for till 30 meter dia it's 60 mm apart from uh, above 30 meter they go for 80 mm it's not so simple uh, as a manufacturer as i said there are various calculations with it different uh, balloon size have different uh, well depending upon the weather conditions also the load exerted sir it's not a basic thumb rule, sir. It has okay, to so come from a... it has to be a project specific and uh, yes. the size specific. Okay. And uh, Mr. Vikas, you said that uh, pumping needs some uh, designing solutions, right? So what is the, uh, you know, points which a vendor or the entrepreneur needs to be considered when they are designing the pumping solutions for that particular feedstock? I think it's a very good question. And I see lots of anomalies. First, I will start from the top, you know. First thing is, the most of the design engineers which we come across, they have done whole life centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal, centrifugal, centrifugal pumps. So they approach pumping from the centrifugal pump uh, mindset. Here you are going to, you are dealing with a slurry. 
and it's not it's a pd rotary pumps so first thing is many you know you need to think from their performance curve itself centrifugal pumps flow and pressure are inversely proportional to each other here flow is directly proportional to the rpm there yeah. so first thing so that mindset needs to be changed second thing is when it comes to viscosity people do not wants to realize viscosity what is this viscosity because for them 40 meters means you know four bar pressure that's what they thinks but and again the second problem the third problem is they do not want to do the pressure drop so you need to have the proper process people who can do the pressure drop calculation and the pressure drop calculation when you started talking and that's why i made earlier points you need to differentiate differentiate are you pumping cow dung are you pumping fresh mud what is the consistency of the cow dung what is the consistency of the fresh mud and and when it comes to the paddy straw because i live in delhi and i always feel good when some plants you know we supply something in punjab because i know that is going to solve me. so when you are pumping the paddy straw that is a very different element altogether we have uh, done with one of the uh, player uh, the uh, study with, we have done the work with the, the, in their pilot plant and we know paddy straw is very very different animal altogether and consists of paddy straw people are soaking some people has a process of in the cold water some people have a hot water how long you are soaking it and then you are pumping and what is the consistency and paddy straw viscosity goes 1 lakh to 1.5 lakhs so maybe you are talking 30 meter pipeline size but the viscosity uh, if you do the pressure drop calculation it is going to be huge so if you are not considering this pressure drop calculation in the pd rotary pumps you are going to mess it up whole pumping itself and it's a hold heart of the whole process so people definitely i would say do not take consideration of viscosity and you need to you, you must uh, do, do, do the consideration when we are talking about the uh, screw pumps or so you also need to see the temperature especially when you are heating this so temporary this pump performance is also dependent on the temperature so that also we need to do the consideration so there are some of the things i think we need to take care which will definitely help okay and uh, florian i have a question for you uh, we have already discussed about the why we need agitation inside the digesters along with yes your slow moving agitators have uh, less electrical consumption compared to the fast moving just i would like you to answer that what is the difference between the submersible agitators and the motor mounted outside agitators as well as can you give a case study so that you know uh, everyone over here can connect easily maybe a napier grass has a feedstock yes um, we have a big project on the philippines it's a 10 megawatt uh, biogas plant uh, with uh, with more than 400 tons per day in napier grass and pineapple trunks and uh, uh, um, pig slurry uh, there we have it's all all of our components from the uh, uh, liquid feeding pump from the dozer from the uh, uh, pumps and uh, complete mixing solution but uh, uh, we are fans from our long shaft and side entry mixers because uh, 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 probably for uh, napier grass with, uh, with the submersion mixers, you get only, uh, many problems, I think, because uh, the uh, the ropes and the uh, uh, electric cables uh, go damaged every half a year, one year, two years, or everything. And every time when you must make service on your uh, sub, uh, submersion mixer, then you must open the roof or you have a, a service opening. It's really expensive. Uh, um, and uh, then you uh, lost your complete gas uh, in this time. And with a long shaft mixer, you uh, put only uh, um, the subset under the opening from the uh, side mounted or side entry mixer. Uh, and then you can put it out, make the service on the propeller, because the propeller is like uh, a tire on, uh, on the car. It's a wear and tear part. You must change it after three, four years, because the wear and tear from neighbor grass, it's really high or uh, with chicken manure in Germany, we have many sand inside. Uh, it's really abrasive and then you must change the uh, propeller after two, three years or when you have a slow moving mixer up to five or 10 years. Um, yes, uh, and, uh, and for a submersal mixer, when you, uh, 
we have this experience in Germany, in the south of Germany, we, uh, uh, we use uh, the most time uh, a higher temperature inside the digester up to f uh, 55 degrees uh, because we have many grass and, and uh, cow dung and everything inside with straw and uh, we uh, use only thermophile uh, uh, system and you can't install a submersion mixer inside this digester because the temperature too high and the viscosity viscosity is, viscosity is really important um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the flow uh, uh, at the submersal mixer is too less and the temperature can't go away from the submersal mixer and uh, then the mixer go damaged and with, uh, uh, with the ropes and the cable every time you have problems with a long shaft mixer where the motor is outside and the gearbox is outside you have only the, the tube inside with the propeller and the sealing system then you have no problems and the lifetime it's much more higher than a submersion mixer. Uh, at the beginning, the costs are a little bit more expensive for a uh, side entry mixer, but the life cycle costs are much more cheaper because you uh, don't need so much service. Yeah, I don't see any much difference in the capex, but yes, if your electrical efficiency is uh, you know, almost consumption is 50% less than the submersibilized it is, but I'm sure that uh, this would be a very good news for the uh, project entrepreneurs or the people who are looking for installation of the plant and uh, yes this is a part of innovation and I would like to ask uh, Palaj that coming back to our uh, upgradation unit which would be the common question for both the upgradation units that what are the other innovations you have uh, or you are doing under this to ensure that the losses are less and the recovery is more compared to the products which are already available in the European market. So, like I said, we already offer 99% recovery, which is, which is, I guess, on par with our world competitor, which is ZBEC Absorption, which is based in North America and has a similar reference list size such as ours. And what we're seeing in the Indian market is that even when we're wo working with larger players, their appetite is only up to 98, 97% recovery rate. They don't care for the 99%. So, we're already a little bit ahead of the curve over here. So what we're trying to do is just try to make our systems run as efficiently as possible, even reduce the power consumption even further, because that is the only OPEX of our systems. Most of the systems that we deliver, there are only two uh, working parts, basically the vacuum pump and the blower. So if we work on efficiencies of that and reduce it even further, we can offer a system that is much more easier on the OPEX, as long as the CAPEX also. So that is something that we are constantly striving to work on, even on our own plants that we ourselves install for ourselves. Okay, but uh, this will ensure that the capex would be same, or there might be a difference in the capex compared to the present uh, cost of the. Plant. So the capex would not really change much because, for example, the va a lot of the components we make ourselves, like we have a group of companies. For example, the vacuum pump we use is made at our parent company Mazda Limited. So we do our innovation in-house and a lot of times that's why we have faster deliveries, lower capex because that we're not really paying vendors for the bought out items, it is our own item. So we can do a lot of research and development in-house and to ensure that the cost doesn't pass on to the customer but it adds to our value. Yes, I do agree to that and uh, yes Nick, would you like to add something to the same point? Yeah, so as far as membrane is concerned, so I would say in terms of yield, it is already proven that membrane can give as high as 99.5% yield without any issue. And I'm talking about three-stage system. In India, mostly we offer two-stage system for the reason, uh, definitely the cost. Uh, but the, that yield can be achieved only when the control is proper. When people say that, okay, there is loss, it means there is issue in the control. Measuring all control variable, ensuring whatever membrane is required to perform at its best efficiency, those are maintained, and continuously analyzing, monitoring, and modulation. That is key to get the uh, purity. And we are very good at that. Our plants are running and continuously giving more than 90 8 percent yield for the two-stage system also. The another innovation what we have doing and uh, we are uh, almost in implementation stage, it's uh, OMI, it's our in 
uh, artificial intelligence uh, platform uh, which is introduced in USA market. So basically what it is getting, it is doing the prevention, like just monitoring the parameters and studying the trend. If that trend indicate in past that something happened, those issues happen, just based on the, that learning curve, artificial, artificial intelligence give, give the masses to operator, hey, this issue is going to happen and you, you can avoid it by doing this. So we are going to that level. Def innovation is definitely key, and um, in future, as we grow, those kind of things are required. Because when client they are setting a business, they are not talking about one plant, two plant. They are talking about hundreds, operating, managing them for that. Uh, th that's where the technology comes in picture. So we we are working on that continuously, and uh, uh, hopefully we, we we will implement those things pretty soon in India as well. Yes, as I already uh, said and would like to repeat that, you know, membrane and PSA, but the technologies are, don't have any problem, but the technology suppliers are bringing a bad name to the projects or the products. And uh, yes, I would like to understand, Prantek, about is there, are there any innovations? Like, you know, I have seen one of the uh, projects in Europe where the people have started installing solars on the double membrane. So is there any similar kind of innovations going on from your side? Yeah, so uh, people are using three membrane uh, structures, uh, you know, probably you are talking about that, three, three membrane structures, yes. So what we have done is that uh, not going to three member, we are, uh, so that is an aluminum uh, coated being there. So we are infusing aluminum in the coating. So, so we are going with two membranes only. So we have only two membranes, but the inner membrane will have an aluminized coating which will uh, reflect that uh, sun energy and all that thing. So that is the latest innovation from our side. So it's a two membrane thing, but with uh, that aluminum coating, not three membrane. And when we compare the cost with the existing three membrane? So yes, definitely the cost is lower. The cost is lower. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, with this, I think we would uh, love the floor to explore for some questions and if there are any questions. Please introduce yourself and uh, then you can. Hello, uh, this is Kiran Kumar uh, from Kashyap, uh, Hyderabad. Uh, I have a question uh, to the upgradation uh, process. Uh, the biogas uh, contains uh, H2S also. And uh, you know, the percentage of H2S varies significantly uh, based on uh, the feedstock. Uh, let us say uh, we take an example of uh, biogas generated from distillery spent wash, for example. So there the H2S is uh, pretty high. It is uh, expected almost uh, touching up to 30,000 ppm also. Uh, so my question is, ki, uh, the, in the upgradation process, the H2S removal, uh, which kind of system you would recommend at what percentage of H2S generally available? I mean, like, you know, looking, considering the H2S percentage, uh, like uh, say between uh, uh, the chemical, biochemical, and purely biological. So, any guideline you would like to, you know, suggest? I, I would like just like to touch the question. Then later you can also answer it. Uh, it's a very good question which was asked. I was uh, heading as a technical expert on World Bank project, where the same question was asked by the World Bank team, and we had made a diff very good uh, chart, which I'm not sure whether. We can share it with the public, but every product or the technology which is available right now has been designed for to handle particular amount of H2S. When you're talking about biochemical, yes, anything about 10,000 ppm of H2S, you have to install a biochemical scrubber. When you talk about 1,000 ppm, then there are different uh, technologies. I'm sure that uh, Palash and Nick would like to add some more, uh, give some more uh, details about the technology. Yeah, so H2S. Uh, 30,000, I think that is found in India only. So no, mostly, most of the other part of the world, you will not, don't see that my kind of concentration. But in any case, uh, there is very simple thumb rule, which is based on the OPEX and CAPEX. So when your H2S loading is low, and uh, what we have learned um, based on our experience, if your loading is within uh, 100 to 150, maximum 100 to 20, 120, kg per day, then media-based H2S removal system are cost effective in terms of because their capex is low, but opex is high, but still uh, considering your media consumption, it doesn't harm you 
and uh, it's it's better option. But when H2S loading goes very high, and uh, that to up to 30,000 uh, uh, ppm, then definitely you have to go for the scrubbing system. And there are two technology out there, which is the caustic scrubbing, biological scrubbing system, and the iron chelate system. In both the selection criteria, again, it goes to the turn down. If you have very pretty much constant loading, then uh, caustic scrubbing is also uh, pretty good. But if you have huge variation in your uh, loading of the H2S, then iron chelate gives slightly upper hand just because of the, you know, that controllability will be there. So you're just wearing the uh, flow rate and, uh, you know, those things uh, operating the, uh, uh, operating sorry, maintaining the operating variable. You can, you can uh, operate it at wide range. So iron chelate has that, that slight edge. But I think biological scrubber has more footprint than uh, uh, iron chelate. So it's confidence also which client need to have. I think all the technologies are good. Sure. So <clears throat> that's something that we deal on a day-to-day -day basis. The H2S pretreatment is part of our system also. And like uh, uh, the gentleman correctly mentioned that 30,000 is something you will only find in India with spent wash. So a lot of times what our European clients do is that they inject a little bit of oxygen inside their digesters to make sure the H2S content can be reduced at the source before it comes into the pretreatment system to reduce the OPEX of the pretreatment system. And when we design our H2S pre-cleaning system, we will ask you what is the maximum you have ever seen in the entire life cycle of the plant. And we will design the plant to deal with that. And in the meantime, if your H2S reduces, your OPEX will reduce because it's a consumable. That on the amount of H2S, that is the amount of consumable that will be used. So if you have 10,000 one day, more consumable will be used. If you have 2,000, less consumable will be used. So the CAPEX won't change too much. However, the OPEX will change. And if you have less amount of H2S, you will have less amount of cost because it's a very basic thing. You have to maintain a certain amount of pH in order to ensure that the H2S is getting absorbed. So when your H, uh, pH is being measured in a certain automatically monitored IoT-based system, you don't really have to worry much about it. The consumable itself will take care of the amount of H2S. And as he rightly mentioned, if it's going continuously about 10,000 to 20,000, then definitely you want to have a biochemical scrubber so that you can regenerate your media rather than having to constantly buy it. So that reduces your OPEX at the same time. So you're paying now, but saving later. And that is what we recommend also. So in short, technologies are already always or already there in place. You need to have right technology selection with correct equipment sizing and selection. That would be the key for any success of the project. Yes. Any more questions? then I would like to ask Florian about, uh, now Florian, when we are talking about, uh, you have seen the European market and the Indian market, how do you expect the Indian market or where exactly the Indian market is right now compared to the European market or whether you see the Indian market can exceed the European market in the near future? Hmm. Yes, um, the Indian market is, uh, for, uh, the biogas Indian market is uh, in the startup, I think. Uh, you have experience. Uh, but I think uh, um, we, uh, Germany or uh, uh, the companies from Europe can help us uh, really well with our experience uh, in the future. Uh, I think this is uh, the good job uh, with, uh, from the IBA with our uh, Fachverband Biogas in Germany. Um, when, when we get, uh, work more together for the exhibitions and something, uh, bring other technology, uh, technology companies uh, from Germany to India um, uh, will help you. And uh, I, I, for us it's a little bit different because your substrates or your feedstocks are completely different to our uh, substrates in Europe. But I think uh, it should be not a problem uh, that we uh, will uh, work together in the future on the biogas market. Okay. So if there are any questions or uh, we can close the session. Yes. Sure, sure. Just, just a minute. So 
any questions or uh, yes then uh, we would uh, like to bring this to an end and i always uh, feel that you know clean energy is the future and we feel that you know future is now so let us work together and finally let us wish all of uh, us a great or lot of energy enthusiasm shared trust and uh, we are look forward for the bright future and thank you for the informa markets and indian biogas association where I, we can see that the event has been at, uh, attended by various government officials, practitioners, energy experts, project promoters, and we see this has a grand success. And uh, there is no other event in the country which shows biogas or bioenergy to this level where Indian Biogas Association is helping. And we can really see the entire team has put their heart and soul in the to make this as a grand success. Thank you. Thank you so much, moderator of the session, for wonderfully conducting and concluding the session. Ladies and gentlemen, that was just a concluding session of the day, not just a concluding session of the day, but the three days expo and conference, REI 2022, the 15th edition, the crystal edition. May I request the moderator of the session to kind, kindly present a memento to all our panelists and thank them. We thank each one of them for sparing some time and sharing their thoughts and experiences with us. We'd like to present our memento to Mr. Brantik Sinha. We thank Mr. Nek Singh Thakur. A big thank you to Mr. Vikas Kumar. And we are also grateful to Mr. Florian Juwick. We are also thankful to Mr. Pal Palash Tarapur. Once again, may I request Dr. Shukla to join us onto the stage to kindly present a memento to the moderator of the session. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of the session and the end of the three days conference. Can we put our hands together and make this session and this moment more memorable? We present a memento to Mr. Srinivas and Karsola for wonderfully conducting and concluding the session. May I request all the panelists to kindly come forward for a good photograph. I once again have to thank from the deepest corner of my heart to each one of us present here for making this conference a grand, grand success. With that, we conclude the REI 2022, the 15th REI 2022, the Crystal Edition here. Ladies and gentlemen, we would be hopeful and wanting to see you the next year in the Expo.